Good morning and welcome this 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, the 9th of October 2022. Welcome to each of you. Whether you are on a ship or whether you are in your homes, know this, God loves you. Whether you are out in the ocean or in a harbour, know this, God loves you. This morning I will read for us from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and I read from the 11th verse. In the course of his journey to Jerusalem, he was traveling through the borderlands of Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, he was met by ten men with leprosy. They stood some way off and called out to him, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And while they were on their way, they were made clean. One of them, finding himself cured, turned back praising God aloud. He threw himself down at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. At this Jesus said, Were not all ten cleansed? The other nine, where are they? Could none be found to come back and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to the man, Stand up and go on your way. Your faith has cured you. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts and minds. This parable, or not this parable, but this, this recording of the healing of the ten lepers is probably very familiar to you. In the field of HIV, which I have spent much of my uh, priesthood working in, we always looked at passages like this related to leprosy and equated them to ways in which people could respond to HIV. And one of the reasons for that was that the stigma and the shame associated with HIV is very much that which was um, experienced by people who were living with leprosy in the time of Jesus. People with leprosy were shunned from society. They had to wear a bell that they would ring, and as they walked around, they would shout out, Unclean! Unclean! in such a way that people knew that they were there and that they could protect themselves from infection. And what you also found was that the regulations around people with skin conditions, be it leprosy or anything else, was very firmly um, put in place by the religious community. And so this is why Jesus says to the ten lepers, go and show yourselves to the priests, because the priests have to declare that they are no longer infectious or that they are clean or that they no longer have leprosy or any skin disease. What is it that makes one person turn back and nine carry on? Nine, all ten, all ten are listening to Jesus. All ten are responding to what Jesus has told them to do. All ten are acting in faith. These are people with leprosy, and Jesus is telling them to go and show themselves to the priests. That's not going to work very well if they still have a skin condition when they get there. But they all turn and they do what Jesus asks them to do. Maybe they were so preoccupied with getting to Jerusalem or getting to the priests that they didn't even notice that they had been healed. And so many times the distractions of our everyday life and the things that we are involved with can keep us from recognizing the wonder of God's engagement in every moment of every day of our lives. This one, this Samaritan, who on his way notices that this affliction that has kept him isolated from society is gone. 
this disease that has meant that he lives in the shadows of society, hiding in caves, picking up scraps where he can find them, he notices that this affliction is gone. And immediately he turns, praising God, coming back to Jesus, throwing himself at Jesus' feet and thanking Jesus, thanking God for the miracle of a life restored. Because to have your leprosy removed is having your life restored. It means being able to go back into society. It means being accepted as a human being and not just as a burden. And Jesus asks, why is it that only this man comes back? Well, we've spoken about the fact that our everyday life can distract us from seeing the glory of God in our lives. But the other part of it is that if we are imbued with and we live an attitude of gratitude, it can change the way that we understand so much of the world. And here is the difficult position. It is not gratitude that gives us, uh, it is not joy that gives us gratitude, but gratitude that makes us joyful. So the gratitude comes first. One of the practices that I usually use when I'm conducting a retreat is I ask people to go through Psalm 136 and write their own version of it. And if you're not familiar with the psalm, maybe you want to look it up for yourself. And the psalm starts with these words. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his love endures forever. Alone he worked great marvels, for his love endures forever. In wisdom he made the heavens. His love endures forever. And the psalm continues to remember the events in the lives of the people of Israel as they are brought from slavery to freedom. And it recounts these steps. And after each description, you have this, for his love endures forever. And it is the attitude of gratitude which is making people look back historically and see what it is that God did for them. Our challenge is to do that in everyday life and to recognize the many gifts that God gives us every moment of every day. If it wasn't that God filled your lungs with breath, today you would not be alive. You would not have woken up. If it was not that God designed this body of ours that allows our heart the impulse to keep beating, we would not have life. We would be dead. If it was not for the love of God that gives us the skills to be able to work, to earn money, that gives us family that are able to care for us, that gives us those things that we need every day, the clothing that we put on, the water that we need to wash ourselves, the food that is served to us, or that we cook ourselves. None of that is possible without God. And so my challenge for you today is to write your own Psalm 136. Look at the countless blessings that God gives you. Look at the countless ways in which your life, every moment of every day, is simply because God is and God wills you to be. And then give thanks to the God of gods for his love endures forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us in our own languages. Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you. Those you love, those you pray for, those you serve, this day and always. Amen. God bless you.